Hi everyone, uh, welcome to lecture two on theories on crowd behavior. Today we're going to be taking a look at de-individuation theory. And as we progress through the, the lecture, I'd like you to think back to the, the stuff we did on Le Bon and consider the ways in which this theory is different to and similar to that, uh, to Le Bon's theory on crowds. Okay, de-individuation does link to Le Bon's work. It draws on the concept of submergence of individual identity. And if you remember from the first lecture, that's when uh, when individuals enter a crowd, they lose their sense of individuality, they lose their sense of self, and they become part of the collective crowd mind. Um, the definition of de-individuation is the immersion in a group to a point that one loses a sense of self-awareness and feels lessened responsibility for one's actions. Zimbardo was one of the first people to attempt a comprehensive theorization of de-individuation, and he based his work on earlier studies which demonstrated a link between anonymity and hostility. And here's a very basic introduction to Zimbardo's experiment. It's a bit tongue-in-cheek, and it's not meant to be very detailed. So according to Zimbardo's theory, individuation was associated with reason and order. That is when individuals were aware of themselves, uh, they were capable of reasonable action and were able to behave in an orderly man uh, manner, and social order was preserved. Under conditions of de-individuation, however, impulse and chaos uh, rule human behavior. And the most important condition for all of this is anonymity. So under the condition of anonymity, uh, we see changes in subjectivity. There's a reduced level of self-evaluation, re reduced levels of self-observation, and there's also less shame, less guilt, and less fear. And this leads to behaviors uh, associated with a lowered threshold for exhibiting antisocial behavior. So in other words, you're less likely to be on your best behavior, on socially acceptable behavior, when uh, under a condition of anonymity. And an example of these antisocial behaviors would be impulsive actions, emotional actions, and destructive behaviors. And Dina uh, revised uh, Zimbardo's model uh, due to conceptual and empirical limitations. And the conceptual limitations of the Zimbardo model were uh, the psychological mediators, so that we know that when you put people into a crowd under conditions of anonymity, the outcome is antisocial behavior, according to Zimbardo. But there's no idea of the psychological mediators, what happens in between the input of crowd and anonymity and the output of these uh, antisocial, impulsive, emotional behaviors. The empirical limitations are quite simple. Uh, there's an uh, Zimbardo proposed that de-individuation led to antisocial behavior, but often crowd activity is not antisocial in nature, so it simply cannot account for the full range and variety of crowd behaviors. And to counter this, or to counter some of the critiques, uh, he proposed objective self-awareness as the psychological core of de-individuation. So his model of de-individuation went something along the lines of this. People were immersed in groups, and possibly due to, cause, due to all of the activity around them and to being in a crowd, they uh, suffer from an information processing overload. There's simply too much information for them to accurately perceive and process. 
and this overload uh, blocks self-directed attention and leads to a lowered objective self-awareness. So you can no longer monitor or assess your own behavior. You can't compare it to your normal internal standards. So you can't judge whether or not the behavior that you're engaging is, in is normal for you. Um, and at this point, you are increasingly controlled by external stimuli. And depending on the kinds of stimuli that you are exposed to, this could result in pro and or antisocial behaviors. And uh, Prentice, Dunn and Rogers, uh, they add uh, another layer to this, to this model, essentially. So they make a distinction between public and private self-awareness. And the idea uh, would go something along this. You're emerged in a group, as for the previous model. Um, there's a sort of information processing overload. And this blocks either your private self-awareness or your public self-awareness. Now, your private self-awareness is something along the same lines as, um, uh, I've forgotten his name. Sorry, give me a second. Okay, your private uh, self-awareness is a measure of, or an assessment of whether you would normally engage in this behavior. And your public self-awareness is your ability to assess how others would judge your actions. So your ability to assess whether your, your behavior is normative, is in line with social guidelines. And at this point, you are controlled by external stimuli as well. But there are, there are problems with this, with this model of uh, crowd action. And that's essentially because it portrays the individual as asocial and divorced from society. This is very similar to the critique of Le Bon. And many of the critiques applied to Le Bon's work can also be applied to this. So it positions identity as a single personal entity. And the idea is that when your standards for reasoned action are not met, behavior suddenly becomes less inhibited. So as soon as the restraints are lifted, uh, people are out of control. Um, and it also means that the group essentially and group actions are the death of the individual, they're the death of individual personality. Um, and this lost identity is what leads to antisocial behavior. Another critique of, of de individuation theory, <coughs> excuse me, is that there's no consideration of the power of group or mass action. And this is something that uh, well, Riker will say that Le Bon got right. So, Le Bon at least acknowledged that groups had power, they had potential, they had energy, and he wanted to harness that energy for, uh, for social control and for political power. But uh, this version of, of crowd, excuse me, of uh, crowd behavior um, does not consider the power of the group at all. It ignores the potential of crowds to affect social change, and it igno ignores the potential of the, the crowd full stop. So like Le Bon, the crowd is portrayed as incoherent, and mass uh, action is essentially meaningless, as the crowd is composed of automatons or people of diminished capacity. But unlike Le Bon, there's no, uh, there's no use for this group of people. There's no positive to this idea of the crowd. 